Washington's Clear Thinking Headquarters. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9 on 630 WMAL. 737 on the Morning Majority. Good Monday to you here in D.C. Brian Neiman, Michael Steele, former chairman of the RNC, in this morning. Great to be with you. It's awesome to have you Good here. Good morning, everyone. Pleased to be joined now by Major General Robert Scales, Fox News military analyst. General, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well, gentlemen. What's going on? Great, well, General. You tell us what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you the man. Yeah. What, what is going on in Libya first? First oh, and foremost. Oh, my goodness. Uh, now the Af- African Union has decided to side with Gaddafi uh, right. and uh, and try to establish this bogus ceasefire, and, or better yet, to try to impose it on the rebels. Uh, of course, uh, what this will lead to, as I'm sure all of you know, is... Uh, uh, would be uh, essentially genocide in the East because our friend Gaddafi and his henchmen have have worked very very carefully to to put together all the lists of names uh, of those necessary uh, or needed to be executed in order for Gaddafi to remain in power. So this is a non-starter for the rebels, but it certainly shows that Gaddafi believes at least that he's gaining the high ground. Remember, uh, in this business, you only negotiate from a position of power or at least perceived position of power. Yeah, exactly. I, I said a little bit earlier, uh, General, that uh, for Gaddafi, this was a matter of uh, not uh, trying to figure out how to get off the stage, but rather how to reposition himself on the stage. Oh, I mean, there's, there's absolutely no question about that. I mean, he, he he believes that in spite of, well, let me put it this way, he believes that that NATO air power will not be able to swing the balance of power in favor of the rebels. And I think pretty much uh, what we've seen so far uh, supports that. Gaddafi's done, uh, I think, uh, tactically, a good job in being able to hide his forces among the people, to be, to obviate the killing effects of aerial firepower. And if he's able to continue that over the next few weeks, then the advantage is going to continue to shift to his side. Now what he's trying to do is to translate a what he perceives as a military advantage into a political advantage mm-hmm. by trying to get some legitimacy from the AU. And the AU, which consists mainly of, of fellow uh, Arab dictators, is the only organization that he thinks that he can co-opt because he's pumped tens of billions of dollars into the AU over the years. He's lost all credibility in the West, so his last best hope is to leverage the AU to regain control of his country and basically butcher those who oppose him. Mm-hmm. But he does seem to keep on trying to bring back some type of negotiation. We had uh, Congressman Kurt Weldon, former Congressman Kurt Weldon over there, and there's always been talk about his inner circle wanting to talk with other people from the West. I mean, th- what does that tell you that the Gaddafi is talking to other people about possibly having some kind of ceasefire? It tells you that that explains very well the reason why Gaddafi's been in power for 41 years. Uh, this is a guy who <clears throat> who knows how to manipulate virtually everything. He knows how to manipulate the West, uh, his uh, fellow Arab leaders, uh, the AU. Uh, he, uh, you know, they all say he may be crazy, but he's not stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he has been able to remain in power for, because of his ability to do what he's doing now with the West. Now, Kurt Weldon is a, is an old an old friend of mine from Pennsylvania. He's doing the best he can. But at the end of the day, uh, there's an old saying in the military. Uh, you know, the, the the end of a campaign will always be determined by ground truth. And right now, ground truth is the fact that Gaddafi's forces occupy three-quarters of the country and are getting ready to besiege the last redoubt of the rebel forces, which is going to be tragic for them, and frankly, in my opinion, tragic for the rest of the world. Hey, General, we, we, we have the situation with, uh, with uh, you know, Gaddafi, but then you flip it over to Egypt. Uh-huh. Uh, you've got Mubarak now, who's under a, an enormous amount of pressure and mounting pressure, uh, you know, legally for embezzlement, and uh, of public funds and, and killing protesters. Yeah. What, what do you see as the legal challenges that uh, Mubarak uh, is, and his family are going to face uh, as they sort of uh, yeah. live there on the, on the Red Sea Resort? My, my sense is, I'm a historian, as you know, my, uh, my sense is that this revolution is following the course of all revolutions. There's always a Jacobin uh, a phase of a revolution. Once the euphoria is over and, and it comes time to... Uh, to, to achieve some type of political order, the fir- one of the first things you do uh, is you is you go after the former regime, whether it's you know whether it's King Louis or mm-hmm. or or the uh, Romanovs in Russia uh, or, or the Weimar regime in Germany, and I think that's what you're seeing here. It's a Middle Eastern version of a revolt against the regime uh, in an attempt to try to 
try to build some type of stability in Egypt, and it certainly doesn't bode well for Mubarak and his family. Look, this guy has, has clearly pilfered billions of dollars from his people. I got that. But I think one of the one of the worst things that this revolution can do is to is to turn on its former leaders instead of trying to build a a, a viable democracy. All right. Let me let me ask you one more question on Libya because it sounded to me like you think that Gaddafi is slowly actually winning this war that maybe was a stalemate. Where does it turn? How can it turn in our favor? And can it turn without actually putting forces on the ground? Two things. First of all, the answer to your second question is no. Uh, but uh, but the, the only advantage the rebels have is time and the ability to, to establish some form of relationship with NATO. By that I mean putting trainers uh, on the ground, uh, put eyes on the target in these cities so that NATO air power will be more effective against uh, what Gaddafi is trying to do, essentially hiding among the people, uh, to stretch this thing out, to, to, to try to establish a stalemate that exists long enough for the rebels to get the weapons and the training and the organization and the communications and the intelligence they need to 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 face down Gaddafi. Look, this is a war between dumb and dumber. Uh, the, Gaddafi doesn't command the 101st Airborne Division. His his rabble uh, army is almost as is is uh, uh, as as poorly put together as the rebels. So there is hope here. But the only advantage the rebels have is number one to gain time, and number two to gain some, gain some support. And the only way to do that is for Western nations to come to their aid. Right now, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Now, you know, as, as if, if there was a, enough instability in the Middle East, mm-hmm. you have uh, in Israel, uh, Hamas and, and uh, Israel uh, going at each other in the Gaza Strip. <laughs> uh, but but now you're hearing signs, or at least the sounds of, uh, of folks saying, let's, let's bring a little bit of calm and let's try to find some stability here mm-hmm. uh, to bring the violence down. Uh, how do you see that playing out, yeah, uh, given what's been taking place the last couple yeah, of weeks? Right. It's very interesting. Also, there's an element of technology involved here. You know, the Israelis have this new system called the Iron Dome, which is essentially a a um, a, uh, a, a missile and a radar system uh, that are knitted together to shoot down these primitive rockets. And that's given the Israelis breathing time to back off and to, and to not be goaded into reacting against uh, Hamas uh, in Gaza. And this is, of course, this is... This is driving Hamas nuts because they, they're trying to get the Israelis, literally trying to get the Israelis to attack. But because of because of this rocket defense system, they've been able to protect the Israelis. They've been able to protect the villages, keep uh, a popular opinion uh, in Israel on their side, and 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 to prevent uh, prevent being forced into some type of tragic overreaction, which would only inflame the the Arab world and drag the Israelis into this business. And that's the last thing the Israeli government wants. Mm-hmm. General, great to have you on the show. Thanks very much for your time and your insights. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, General. Major General Robert Scales, Fox News military analyst here on the morning.